you'll notice that the comparison of last year's premium and the total cost versus this year's premium we're only about $960 higher for all the coverage. That includes the <coughs> 41 million for the properties, which is blanket coverage, has a kind of a breakdown, a lot of additional benefits. It includes the, the school board legal liability. It includes the um, um, uh, general liability, the crime insurance, <coughs> and the insurance, both liability and physical damage. And it also includes the you know, umbrella type policy. So this is. This is a package and it's only $900 higher. Now what Dr. Moore was referring to is uh, the school board legal uh, liability policy. So the $3 million policy, we'll flip back to the back of the pages here. This policy is uh, outlined on, uh, uh, it, it's called school board legal claims made form. It has a $7,500 uh, retention form on it. And that particular cost, if you look on the front page, is $23,000 a year. Now, we have priced the market, and there's a policy that we're going to recommend to you to consider. It's called Ed Educators Management Employment Practices Liability Policy. It's actually a little broader policy than the one we currently have. This is a different carrier, and we can bring that policy in around $18,200. And $62. So if we change policies, we would end up with a net savings on, on, on the group of almost $4,000 as opposed to the $900 increase, if you believe it like it is. Now, I like this policy, but it is a change. They are claims made policies. So we have to discuss this. And, and in order to change this, we have to complete a complete new application stating that we, we know of no claims or possibilities of claims that we have not already reported. So with that being in mind, we could do that if we could if we could do that, we could save a little money on this on this particular policy would be my recommendation if you said you, in other words you would recommend doing that? I'd recommend you consider, yes I did. If we did have any claims we were unaware of that would come up later? No, you just how, how would that be picked up? Well, if there's any claim that any board member knows of we went through this once before, but we have to be very cautious how we answer these questions, you know, and that, that just make sure that we've all discussed this and to put it out there. We, we, we list everything we know about, you know, or could possibly be a claim, you know, and that's, but we've done a pretty good job in the last two years of keeping up with this now. We all reported everybody sneezes. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it is important because we've been through this before and I want to be sure we all clearly understand. Uh, so yes. on page three where you list the board legal liability and it mentions <coughs> the former company, which is Indian Harbor Insurance, uh -huh. that AXV, you're referring to us to another company. No, no, AXV is a rating for that company. A, a means it's an excellent rated company and then the XV is Roman numeral 10 is 15, which is the highest financial rating that an insurance company can have. That's the, form, the one we're not going to use. That's, that's the one we currently have. Okay. Yeah. You're recommending a change. I'm recommending a change to a company that's also a, uh, a, a 15. Oh, okay. It's also an A15. Okay. It's the same financial rating. Okay. They're, they are both considered uh, uh, they're companies that are not uh, because they're non-standard type companies, they can write their own type policies, and that's why we have fees and taxes related to them. And they're, uh, it's very important that we look at these policies closely because they're not, they're, their forms are not filed in the Texas Department of Insurance, but not, very few of these forms are. So, what the sales be? Close to $4,000. But if there were, I don't know if there is, but I don't think there is. If there's no suits out there or claims out there, mm -hmm. then, uh, or if there were, would Indian, the other company cover that? Yes. Uh, until yeah. fruition, because sometimes right. each, each year we answer the same questions. So I'm just, I'm just reiterating the fact that we need to be aware of <coughs> claims that anyone could possibly know of. As, as an independent agent such as you are, you are able to get the best book from Various companies, and, and, and after 
assimilate all those quotes or all those possibilities, this is your recommendation. Right. Yeah. That's why I'm suggesting <coughs> we consider this change, because I think this is a considerable savings. I actually think this policy is a little flawed after my review of the policy. So I think it's a win-win for you. Uh, to answer your claim specifically, yes, we priced with several different companies. Uh, I was very disappointed in the average price because it was extremely high. And I, I mentioned the windstorm deductible. They, uh, the Travelers Insurance Group is imposing a $100,000 windstorm deductible. You know, so you have to really look at all these policies and what the features of all the policies are. Because sometimes you may think you've got a good deal and then you find out you've got a $100,000 deductible and you don't want to do that. Dr. Moore, what other insurance things would this this covers this, this, this a lion's share of our. This covers everything with workman's comp, I believe. That, that's correct. The good thing about this this particular group is that it's a fixed cost insurance. Once you buy it, you don't come back. You, you're, not, you're not audited at the end of the year, and every time you buy a new vehicle, you're not stuck with an additional premium. Your experience in the past with dealing with these two insurance companies, I know that. Sometimes, if you do change and go to a different provider, the next year when you start to renew, you could see a drastic increase. Has, has this company, uh, price-wise, on, on the different other customers and clients that you have, have they normally stayed within uh, yes. considerable pricing? Right. We, we have written this, not this form, but with this brokerage company before, and they've been very competitive. Not, not this form. This is a new form. Right. So uh, I didn't but have you've this, had experience with this company. With this company. Right. Mm -hmm. As we've been pleased with. Now, that's not to say, you know, every, every no. day is a new day in the insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about uh, towards the back, the, the exclusions that may apply to mold and terrorism? Well, uh, with, are those in? Well, the, the, first of all, <coughs> this is terrorism. That is a really good point. After the, 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 uh, the tragedy of 9-11-2001, of insurance companies put an exclusion in their policy for terrorism, and then the, the United States government adopted coverage for terrorism. So every policy has terrorism on it unless you reject it. And you'll notice, Deborah, on uh, the terrorist exclusion form for dealing with the proper <coughs> There's a $2,784 premium charge there that we're not not to, is not included in our our numbers because we have excluded it in the past. But we have to exclude the terrorism every year. Now, for it to be a terrorist claim, first of all, it has to exceed $500 million in losses, and then second of all, it has to be declared by the United States Attorney General as an act of terrorism. Otherwise, it's a vandalism. <coughs> and that, that had to be really well defined because, uh, you know, what is an act of terrorism? You know, it's 9 11 obviously was an act of terrorism, but it's, it's let's just say uh, an attack on a Jewish synagogue in Dallas is that an act of terrorism or is that vandalism? So, you know, that's 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 why you had to come up with some real strong definition. And quite honestly, it's going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be very difficult to meet terrorist definitions. And uh, there, there's uh, most governmental entities that we do those with <coughs> are terrorists. As a matter of fact, most of all our customers are sort of terrorists. Now, the mold issue, it's a limited coverage, very limited coverage, excluded it. Mold, you know, really got out of hand back in the 80s. Uh, and, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of controversy. Was it really a problem? Was it really, was it really as bad as, could it really cause death and all this? So, uh, uh, usually, mold is is, is is something that is controlled. So. <coughs> so, your recommendation is to do what you have on your account summary page with the substitution of the other uh, uh, policy for right. school board liability. And then, of course, I have to point out that's a great indication we have to complete the application. And the, 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 there's an outline in the back what we have to do. But I think we should do that and, and, and make sure that we get that uh, <coughs> get a firm quote on it. 